You're listening to a portion of our conversation from episode 250, featuring the Jurassic Wire with myself, Brad Jost, and co-host, Aaron Beyer. If you want to hear the full conversation, download the full episode on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. Today, we discuss the latest from Jurassic World Dominion. We dive into a ton of topics with this one, hitting the film schedule, script changes, set pictures, the film industry as a whole, returning the theaters, and maybe if Lowry will make his return to Jurassic World Dominion. There is a lot in this one, so be sure to carve out some time to watch along. As always, be sure to let us know what you think, and of course, we hope you enjoy it. Let's Let's move on. (laughs) Let's move on to our next topic here. Um, okay, yep. <clears throat> which is Jurassic World Dominion. So there's been, uh, you know, a lot of updates. And like we, we mentioned earlier on in the show, like we haven't talked in a while. So I know you did a, a show with Clayton Fioriti. Uh, you guys talked yep. a lot about uh, a lot of different stuff. And a lot of stuff has happened, you know, since the last month as well. But um, I want to see, like... What what are your thoughts first off? How, what do you what are you thinking about the progression? Do you you know, we haven't really heard much as far as you know, anything really going wrong. I know that's what a lot of our focus was initially was. Yeah. You know, the COVID issues, um will they make it? Will they not make it? Um you know, we talked about a few different uh breakdowns in in COVID, you know, results and tests. So Right. Uh, I I don't know. I'm feeling at least confident in the production right now. How are you feeling? I feel like this movie will be done when they want it to be done. Mm -hmm. So I think that I think it'll be done for their June release. Now, the question is. Well, they will for sure. If if COVID is still a thing, they will let this thing sit on a shelf. Guaranteed. They are Mm -hmm. not releasing this movie to theaters that are are only half open Mm -hmm. or i agree you know half showings a day there's just no way there's no way they let that happen um marvel just pushed their entire slate to next year yeah you know and no i don't think universal has disney money but they've got money and if if they're willing to just like stop production on fast and furious like that's not coming out like these studios are willing to let their big properties sit and mm-hmm. do nothing for extended amounts of time. Yeah. Um, I think this thing gets done and I think it sits in a, I think it sits in an office and just mm-hmm. waits until the movies are ready to open. I think, I think that's think, a fair I, assumption. I think that's a fair, you know, result that you've come to because why would they want to waste their biggest, you know, property here on, on a half empty theater? I mean, it has not worked out for anybody. Yeah. No, you know, it has not worked out whatsoever. Um, tenant, right. Was just in theaters or, you know, partially, I guess, but like, I mean, yeah, but it, you it, can it, argue like, I don't think that Chris Nolan is as much of a pull as Jurassic park either. Like no, Chris, Christopher Nolan movies are getting to me. Like he kind of like, I didn't really like, uh, the one that confused everyone. <laughs> what was the one that was like super confusing? Every one of them. Every one of them. All right. Um, (laughs) Interstellar, maybe? No, before that, with Leonardo DiCaprio and their turning and stuff. uh, uh, Yeah, the dream one. I I didn't like Inception. Inception. (laughs) Now, it's not that it's not that that movie outsmarted me. I I, I was wrong for the ride. I didn't like that movie. Okay, Um, that's fair. So he kind of like he kind of lost me. I never even saw Inception because, or I never even saw. Oh my gosh, I never saw Interstellar because everyone was like, "Oh, it's the sound." I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to the theaters to see this. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I didn't think Dark Knight Rises was all that great. So okay. for me, like Chris, if, but if Christopher Nolan can't pull in audiences, like it's it's not going to happen. And I was reading reports saying that like movie theaters, like it, they didn't even make money off of it because yeah. their costs were greater than their profit on the ticket. Yeah. So no, there's no way this no. thing is coming out in June if it's the way if things are the way it is. I know a lot of people have confidence that things will be better by June. I'm not sure I'm there yet. <laughs> and I, you no. know, who am I? Who am I? I'm no doctor. I'm no like, you know, 
uh, you know, anybody, but like, well, didn't Fauci say like people aren't going to want to go to a theater like for a year after the vaccine even hits? I don't know. I mean, I know yeah. as we get, as we get further and further into this thing, we've got like, you know, doubters, like, is, is this even a real thing? You know, is this just a, a conspiracy in the States? Well, I'm in Canada. I can tell you, it's definitely a very real thing. It's not a States thing. Um, I'm in a different country and I'm stuck at home wearing a bathing suit. <laughs> he only has said. somebody said, what's your address? Somebody send you some pants, man. That's <laughs> I have pants. I'm not going to wear them. Don't send me pants. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I think that like, I think this movie finishes. I really do. And mm -hmm. I think, I think it runs. I think if they're planning on pushing it, I think they run the VFX longer than, than they wanted, than they originally planned on it. Cause why not? Like, why not make VFX better? Yeah. If you, if you, have, if you, if you are projecting a certain amount of profits, they don't have a problem investing money in the VFX. Yeah. I, yeah. And you're, you were saying before that, like, uh, what was it? Um, Marvel stuff has been, you know, pushed and, you know, rescheduled. Yeah. And that's something we're, we're continually seeing is new dates, new dates, new dates. It's like yeah. uh, so, some of these movies have been like, all right, here's the date. Oh, wait, no, wait, here it is again. Oh, here's, okay. the, here's the next one. And here's the next one. It's super annoying, by the way. But um, if I don't know, Warner Brothers, is, if Warner Brothers is willing to push Wonder Woman out, if, if if Warner Brothers is willing to just keep pushing Wonder Woman, which I don't think there's any arguing, Wonder Woman is part of a middling franchise. Like DC is hit or miss, right? Like mm -hmm. I don't think I, I I wouldn't say like every movie is a banger, right? But Jurassic Universal's not going to let that go to middling audiences. There's no way. No, no, no. It's and it's not, not like... going to. And there's no way they put that in streaming either. It's not like, you know, New Mutants or something that's like, well, no, I don't know. Nobody's going to really see this. Let's just put it out. You know, it's, right. it's not like that. Um, and the the whole Mulan thing, you know, you mentioned streaming. Uh, you know, I've heard that that was successful to a point. Mulan's a weird test case for that just because it's like it's a movie people have already seen and own and is already on Disney+. Plus. So, like, I, I don't know what the, you know benefit of putting yeah, that, but that movie, movie was going to come out to that movie was going to come out to divisive mm -hmm. reviews and conversation anyway right sure, so sure. why not put it out see how it does the, the, the problem is you can't base how well streaming did on mulan mm -hmm. because mulan no, no. already had a bunch of things kind of going against it yeah yeah um i personally have not seen it um Me neither i'm a little bit of the thought that i should not support that just because my job very much my job very much depends on you going to the theater please. <laughs> um, you know please yeah. we need to get this thing going like i yeah. trust me if anyone wants these things to open back up it, me i need these things to open back yeah. up um so i don't okay. think this thing's coming out in june that's all i'm gonna say uh, i know i've kind of been under that mindset from the beginning that I don't know. First off, I don't know how they're going to hit the date with everything that's happened and the, the, the delays and everything. Apparently, they're yeah. still on time. I don't understand that. But, um, yeah, I just don't see it happening. And uh, let's actually bring up <clears throat> some information that we have here. So, first off, let's talk about the schedule. So, mm -hmm. I want to bring over to uh, Jurassic Outpost actually have like a little summary of it. So, let's see what they say. Um all right, so this is uh, the filming schedule remains right on time. So this comes from enter French entertainment website Premiere. So I guess it was translated probably. Uh, Colin talked right. with them. He says, we are right on time in the filming schedule. Obviously, it's not easy to film in these conditions. Everyone is doing their own thing, and everyone is disciplined, keeps his distance, wears his mask. Uh, Universal is the producer. Uh, uh, sorry, Universal and the producers are putting everything at our disposal to make it happen. So despite the postponement because of the health crisis, we are on schedule. Yeah, it is a really huge production. We haven't finished yet. We still have quite a few weeks to shoot. Um, what does that mean? I mean, despite you the can't postponement. Be, you can't be off schedule for something that – like the, the, I get it. June, June 21. Like that's the date you want to hit, but I don't, I don't know, man. I just feel like, can you really be off schedule for something that is just that has following no this like placeholder date? 
you know what I'm saying? Um, I, yeah, I get you. I, I'm kind of like tossed up on this this sentence of despite the postponement, we are on schedule. Well, like this, so are they on the same? Is he trying to say that they're on the same schedule that they were? No, right? He, he can't no, be. he just he's just trying to say like despite the issues that we had, we're at least on schedule for what we I think he's saying they're redid. on schedule to finish this movie for the June release date which which Hollywood seems to have faith in because they're pushing movies to June so like man yeah. for me dude it's not even the, like even if theaters were open I don't know man I don't know if I'm gonna be like ready to just like go sit in a crowd you know are your theaters open or no I don't know I think Ours... people went and saw Tenet like yeah. Yes, so they are open because I, I had friends that went and saw Tenet, but like they said that they they're between you were allowed to sit next to like the people you came with, mm -hmm. but then there had to be like a six seat gap or something between groups of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of like, dude, I feel really bad. There was a theater that opened up in my parents, like small town. Yeah. And uh it, dude, this thing, this thing was beautiful. It was it, imagine entertainment, like put this thing out and it was like giant, like reclining seats in every theater. And then there was like couches, like the, the whole floor was nothing yeah. but like couches and stuff. And it was really cool. And then the pandemic hits like within six months of this thing opening. But for me, <sighs> and, I, and my friend was telling me that like, I think it was AMC already mm -hmm. announced that like their prices are going to be going up just due to like the extra cleaning costs and stuff. And it's like, okay, you want to drive people away from theaters? That's how you do it is you raise the prices even more yeah, on these that's, movies. That's nuts. Um, and then there's something in the States going on where like – so up until very recently, studios couldn't own their own theaters because it was technically yeah. like a monopoly of like, create, like creation and distribution or whatever, which mm -hmm. I guess I don't really see why. That's, that's beside the point. I've not really researched this. But the fear is is that – studios can charge whatever they want for the ticket in the sense that like they can even have like a a spectrum of prices which honestly like i don't necessarily mind a spectrum of prices that would actually probably get me into the theater to go see a comedy as opposed to waiting for sure. it to hit netflix like if i could go see a movie that very clearly cost a quarter of the budget of a marvel film right and they were yeah. going to charge me five dollars a ticket like fine whatever um but I don't know, dude, like I grew up loving movies. I work in movies, but it's like it's yeah. getting even to the point where like, you know, for me, my wife and I to go to a theater in a city, $20 a ticket. Mm -hmm. No, no, thanks. I'll I'll rent like or just yeah. it's cheaper to buy it when it comes out, you know? <laughs> yeah, I you know, I was a, a member of AMC Stubbs. I, I forget. It's been so like, long. Whatever what it was. It? Yeah. And no, A-list, A-list. See, I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, I was a member of that and I enjoyed that. I thought that was great. I was literally still going to see movies right until the end. I, I, I think we saw Onward was the last one. And that mm -hmm. opened like two a week or two before everything shut down here. Um, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's on Disney Plus like two weeks later. I'm like, oh, all right. Um, but um, but yeah, I feel like when you mentioned that whole, um, I forget what the name of it was, but the, the fact that now studios are going to be able to own their own theaters or whatever. I feel like that's just the whole... Um, issue that we have going on with streaming services right now it's like where where do i have to go to watch the thing you know where do i have to go mm -hmm. to see the jurassic do i have to go to netflix do i have to go to uh peacock do i have where do i have to go to see this thing because right now hurdles it's you confusing put in front of you know? people <clears throat> the more hurdles you put so for me like here's my thought process the 30 dollars price tag on mulan on disney plus is actually a steal i know that there's people out there like I agree. living in the midwest living not in big cities they say thirty dollars is too much, but for me to go to a movie is twenty dollar ticket guaranteed. Okay, mm -hmm. then it's a twenty dollars for my wife, so I'm already at forty dollars. Yeah, for two tickets, and like, come on, man, like, who wants to like? I don't go on a date night and not, you know, <laughs> my wife and I don't like not get food and concessions. You gotta get the right? popcorn, yeah. You know, yeah, you you try to do stuff. So, and then for us, I can't even drive to the theater. I have to get on. <laughs> hold on. A bus, a train, another train, so that, that I can walk to the theater. Now here's oh. the thing. When I moved to when I moved to Toronto, yeah, that was too many hurdles. I was like, you know what? I'm good. 
I will wait three months for this thing to come out. And I will yeah. just simply buy it for $20 on iTunes. Um, <laughs> but dude, now it's like, you're saying what, how, what do I got to do to see your thing? Like, so yeah. now I'm going to have to, okay. If I'm in Toronto still, it's going to be a bus, a train, a train, maybe, and that, that can be in like in any other direction to go to yeah. a privately owned theater by a studio. No where, offense, where are they going to be? Like, where are they even going to be, though? Like, that's the thing. Like, if you have to go to like the Universal Theater because Universal isn't played in other dude, th- like where where's the, you know, the other the WB? Like, I don't know all these other theaters. Like, well, I don't I don't want to do that. Like, you're, you're saying like, where are they going to be, dude? This lines up perfectly. Now, I'm not calling conspiracy because I think that's a little this is a little <laughs> too crazy. But like these theater these theaters are going to be closing and this just primes disney warner brothers and universal to come in and buy existing theaters yeah and i I can see the amazon theater the netflix theater you know yeah yeah easily like i can easily see like so i go to the scotia bank theater in downtown toronto it's an amazing theater Mm -hmm. but i can easily see that being the disney theater and that's it like if i want to see a Marvel movie like or a Star Wars movie like that's where I have to go but then like what is that where do I go to see a Warner Brothers movie there's only so many theaters in a giant HBO. city like this there's only so many theaters you gotta go to the HBO theater so, so wherever that is I guess <laughs> I, I don't think big studios I don't think the big corporation is actually like I don't think that the corporations really have a problem with the streaming I think it's still like the creatives that like want to get involved with um you know, they, they still want to see their work in a theater, right? Like that's the romanticism of the dream of working in movies is, is seeing your work up on the big screen. And I'm not even saying that like TV is necessarily like settling, but mm-hmm. like if you're a guy like Trevorrow who put in his time and he's now gotten to the point where all of his work, basically almost all of it is on the big screen. Is that something you want to give up? I mean, I guess it is if you just want to get paid, but there's, uh, a, know- there's a romantic there's a romantic yeah. aspect to all this too. Sure. You know? I'm, I mean, TV is becoming something that is, you know, just as good as movies. So a lot of people are oh, heading totally. that direction, but yeah, there is something about like getting your work up on the big screen. Right. But th- it all goes back to, and you were saying, you don't know who it is, whether it's the creatives or, or the studios. Actually, it's a lot of the theaters, you know, like the deals that they have in place, like specifically what happened with yeah. trolls, right. With trolls going, the streaming, you know, Mm-hmm. I guess AMC or cinema. One of those were, were not happy. Cinemark maybe, or so I forget which one. Regal. It was AMC. I don't know. One of them were mad, right? So they're, they're like, they're like, no more Universal movies in our theaters, and it's like, oh, you can just do that. I guess that's why they're going to make a Universal theater down the road. But that doesn't make it, that doesn't even make sense to me. I don't understand that threat. To be honest with you, no. the studios have these theaters over a barrel. Okay, so you say, oh, no more Universal movies. Pfft, okay. Yeah. Well, you'll just. I mean, good luck filling the seats for what, maybe 18 Those, weeks out of the year, you know, yeah. or something like it yeah, doesn't make any sense to me. God forbid Disney, you know, makes somebody mad and they don't show any Disney movies. What are you going to show? Nothing. Cause they own everything. So <laughs> I, uh, I, in my town, there was a, the town next to me was where like, well, before they built this giant theater in my hometown, the town next to me was where we would go to like see the big theater movies. Yeah. And when that thing came in, it was like the small guy who had like the one theater in the downtown area. Like he was like up a Creek, right? Like, well, what are they going to mm. do? So what he was doing was, is he was like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to sell the tickets for less. Right. Cause he had a, he had a lesser theater. Yeah. There's no argument about that. He had a less quality theater. Yeah. Um, and something happened with the the big theater. They they had struck some deal with like dis- distribution to like not supply that guy with movies if he was gonna undercut the big chain. Yeah. So you know what this guy did? This guy this is brilliant. Fine. He charged twenty dollars a ticket just like them. All you can eat concessions on top Ooh. of it. It was awesome. Wow. So like, you know, you it just it just stinks, man. The way that this distribution thing yeah. works, and I think streaming is. I mean, look, I think streaming is a very real part of our future as far as like, I, Oh, for sure. This didn't universal announce that all their movies are going to be day and date anyway. So like, isn't Jurassic world going to be streaming? No, I mean, I, I, I think they, they did. I think they announced like who, where it's going to be or some, it's going to be on Peacock. It's going to be the streaming service, uh, of choice or whatever. 
Um, not, I don't think it's going to be day one. It's going to be whenever, whenever they decide. Um, I thought Universal said they were going to experiment with more day and date, but maybe that's for like animated things where that kind of makes sense, you know, with maybe. kids and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they would. I mean, why not experiment on your biggest stuff? I don't know. Who knows? Do they have a, a Universal? Did they do Bill and Ted? Oh, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't think so. I feel Bill like Bill and Ted. It, it's been in like at least I've seen it. I haven't seen it, but I've seen it playing at drive-ins. Um, plus, it was right. on on demand. So you know, you pay your twenty dollars or whatever it is, and you can watch it on demand. But it's also in theaters too. So. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing, and I've been going to theaters, uh, to drive-in theaters, a lot recently. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of all this, drive-ins were like popping up everywhere, where people with their blow-up, you know, screens and stuff, and we we're just mm-hmm. like had nothing better to do, so we would go to those. But, but you know, our uh, our actual drive-in theater, you know, has been showing a lot of great stuff, so we've been heading out to that one. Um, yeah, st- I don't still don't think I've seen anything new though. <laughs> so uh, at least in theaters, but I know some stuff has been playing at them. Um, but yeah, it's not the optimal experience. You know, this the projections not great. Uh, the sound kind of stinks. <laughs> so you yeah. you know you, you're you're paying for two films usually, so it's a good deal. But like the experience is not the best. Um, no, of course but... it's not the best. I mean. Come on, Dolby Atmos compared to the speakers in your car. <laughs> that, like, that was my favorite going to that Dolby, you know, theater in AMC, man. That was unbeatable. That was so much fun. Dude, so good, man. So good. But let's let's get back to Jurassic. What are we talking about here? Um I don't know. Oh, we're just right, reminiscing so... <laughs> about days. I feel like we're days in the gone walking by, yeah. dead. <laughs> and we're trying to get the light bulb from the theater to show the kids the old movies. Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. I, and what did they? I felt like I felt like that episode. They were gonna be like showing something real. I was gonna be like, oh man, I can't believe they showed that. And it was like a cartoon of something that I've never seen ever. And I'm like, AMC. What? AMC has television rights for Jurassic Park. <laughs> show the that's, kids Jurassic Park, man. That's what was mind-boggling. I'm I'm sitting there that whole episode like, oh, they've got to show something good, right? No. Not at all. No. <laughs> no. Not not in the least. I don't yeah, I don't um, get it. But um so apparently it's on schedule. That's that's the takeaway here, right? Oh, that's so, what we're on. We're still on that. Okay. So let's move on to the next point here, which was from uh Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> And he was talking about some script changes. So things are on schedule, but we've got some potential script changes here. So uh, he was talking with with People TV. Um, and uh, again, Outpost has like a, a nice little summary here. There was a video as well, um, but uh, the summary is nice here. So when asked uh, how to adapt to our current reality, he said, there are elements of the film we are finding are already apropos, but there are some sensitive things that the filmmakers are tweaking and adjusting that might make it right for now and co- uh, contributive and nourishing nourishing for right now. So I think that's an interesting quote, Aaron. The fact that there are some elements that are apropos to the situation that are maybe sensitive to things right now and they're maybe tweaking those things to might make it a little bit better. I mean... What, what do you make of that? That's kind of telling, I feel like. We Well, he's already said like, "Oh, we and we shot our scene where me, Laura, and Sam are like in a closed confined space." So, sure. obviously being in a closed confined space is not a big deal. They're in quarantine together. Yeah. Like they're shooting in quarantine. Um I've actually been watching my wife and I have been watching Big Brother. We watch Big Brother every okay. summer. It's like <laughs> it's one of the things we do. Um uh-huh. and we watch, oh, we're very, this is very sad. <laughs> we watch the live cams. So this thing's Ooh. like literally on at my house, like all the time. <laughs> um, but we've kind of been getting insights into how they've been producing that show. Sure. And basically like the contestants were, they were in self-isolation before the show began. Mm-hmm. And then those that tested negative for yeah. COVID, <clears throat> they picked the 16 to go in the house together. And Normally every year they bring in like, you know, they'll bring in like celebrity guests or whatever to like introduce competitions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's none of that. It's yeah. yeah. The house guests are running everything. Um, 
they, you know, they're, they're announcing their own competitions. They're, there's no special, like, there's no like battle backs to get in. So like, I'm kind of uh-huh. getting like a little bit of insight as to like how you can even run a show like that. And I would imagine sure. that at the film level, it's very similar. It's, Hey, we have our actors and we're paying you X amount of dollars. And now you basically are going to get hazard pay to basically live in isolation with each other. Sure. So that we can try not to get everyone sick. But, and this goes back to my conversation with you a long time ago, Mm -hmm. dumb things like, you know, Claire and Owen, like kissing, like, yeah, that's probably, that would probably happen. Cause I, I feel like that's happened in the last two movies. Did that happen in the fifth one? Did they actually kiss in that movie? I, I think, think so. Did. I think like right in that like diorama thing in the, oh, yeah, maybe. I think maybe right in there. As much as it is to pretend, right. That you're Claire and Owen, like these are very real people. I'm sure they don't yeah, want to yeah. be swap and spit yeah. um, at this stage of the game, you know? Yeah. Despite um, all the testing, I'm sure there's gotta be that like element of like, uh, is this, you know, is this okay? I don't know. <laughs> I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see some script changes for actors that maybe they, and I think we're touching on this at some point, maybe they thought we're coming back and then couldn't. And then now maybe can come back or like, I've heard nothing of like Omar Sy, like he was announced as coming back and then nothing since COVID. Like, so yeah, I don't I know. Would love to know who is still planning on coming back. Yeah. You know, you talked about the whole like big brother environment and this is, it's actually, you went a very, very different direction than what I was kind of thinking in my so head, what were you thinking? but, but we'll get to that. But I, the whole big brother thing, thinking about this hotel that they're all at is like, it's like a dream, man. Like they are it's, all it's staying like the together. The Jurassic park book. They're in quarantine. They're, they're literally all like together in this house, like, and you see, we see, um, sorry, I don't have us on the video here. I should probably put us back. Uh, you don't see like, or you see these videos of like Jeff and Sam, like playing piano mm-hmm. together. And like, you actually don't see much about Laura Dern being together with them outside of something we'll see in a second. But like, y- you know, all these people that, cause universal booked out this hotel. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's that actually we talked about that logo, Remember, we talked about um, this is a, we should maybe bring that up too. We talked about that logo that was made out of like stone and like twigs oh, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's at that yeah. hotel. That's where that is. And it wasn't yeah, a separate but- logo. It was the same logo that we, you know, multiple people were posting about. It was literally on this part of the land, which I've seen from Google Earth. It, and, and it's right there. And it's, it's, you know, that, that was just a fun little thing. Like, so they've got all this stuff, uh, you know. I don't know. I can't imagine what that's like there. It's got to be like a party, but like, are they all like just hanging out together at like the hotel bar? Like what's going on? What is happening? I just want to see I like a camera in there. Anything, I bet at this stage, it's anything but a party. Like ah, I feel I like know. it was yeah. maybe fun and kind of interesting and new when they first started. But like, I guarantee like these people have probably not had anything but carry out <laughs> and take out. Yeah. For maybe, you know, I don't know. The last, I mean, like, it's, a, it's like a like, very, very fancy hotel. So I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe it's got like a good restaurant attached to it. Yeah, it's all it's still, still room service, service, man. Like, that still gets old after a while. It's you not know like. What? I definitely see Jeff Goldblum is like, it never gets old to him. He's just down there like, oh, yes, I'm still playing my keyboard. And then everybody else in the hotel is like, Jeff, come on, dude. I'm trying to sleep, man. <laughs> Stop playing the keyboard. Yes, I'm fine. I'll sing with you. Yes, we are you know friends. Blah, blah, blah. You know the actors aren't like in a standard hotel room. They're probably having groceries brought in. Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably yeah. not that big of a deal, but they are unless they took their family with them, you know, they are separated from their families during this yeah. time. There is no we- there Jeff's is no family weekend is there. jump. You know, there's no weekend jump home or whatever. Well, yeah, actually that's interesting, you know, you t- talking about precautions and stuff like that. Everybody is is isolating, but Chris Pratt did have to jump back home. Uh, because he had a, a, a daughter, uh, I think a, a new kid was born. So, you know, despite having to stay in quarantine, he also did go back there. Plus, there was a point in time where they were supposed to go to Malta, but that never happened. Um, so, like, mm-hmm. you know, other people, stunt doubles and stuff like that were performing out there anyway. Um, and plus, there's been a lot of stuff coming out of there. We're not going to talk about the uh, leak 
set photos and stuff out of Malta today. Um, not really much to talk about anyway, but um, you know, you interesting my looks. opinion on that stuff. Interesting looks, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll check out some official stuff in a little bit. But all right, so going back to my original theory, not Big Brother, but um, <clears throat> let me bring up the uh, article again because I forgot what what it said. Um, all right, so there there are elements of the film of the film, okay, that whatever's in mm-hmm. the film that are apropos to the situation, right? Mm-hmm. What is the the situation is COVID nineteen, right? So we've got We've got a a, a global oh. pandemic happening, so there might be some situations in the script that are apropos to the si- sensitive situation of things right now. That they're maybe trying to make it right for now and contributive and nourishing for right now. You know what I mean? Nourishing, trying to make maybe people feel a little bit better about situations. Um, Do so, you think they were going to introduce something like the DX virus or something like that. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, man. I think so. I think that's what that means, right? Like, I think I think that they were introducing a virus, and it's something we have talked about before. You know, obviously, we brought it up because like, of... Like, are you thinking, like, Planet of the Apes kind of, like, thing? Yeah, I mean, that's what we've talked well, about that, before. But not go over well. No, I know. Um, that's the thing. It's like, we first off, we talked about that as, why would you do that? Planet of the Apes has been, you know, it, it literally oh, just done, right. you know, a few years ago. Why would you, you know, tread on that same ground? Despite the the history with the novel and all that, why would you do that? It doesn't seem like a good idea. So did they end up going that route anyway? Um, I don't know. Like the way that it sounds, Jeff is describing it as maybe something to help nourish you know the uh, situation a little bit so that makes me think you know in my eyes i'm kind of wondering if if maybe they're kind of going to present some hope <laughs> for us all you know to kind of give some some like mm-hmm. relief and sense of of hope for the future in a way instead of making it like hey everybody dies you know and it's just dinosaurs or you know uh, you know are they going to make it a little bit more hopeful that you know somebody finds a cure for something and like everything's okay, you know, because honestly, like it, it's weird, but like back in 2018, you know, we had the volcano movie. Right. And that was, that was a time period where volcanoes were pretty rampant in Hawaii, I think. Right. Like there was a lot of volcanoes going off. So it was yeah. a very sensitive, I felt like situation. They didn't change anything due to that, but uh, it was definitely like, it felt weird, you know, due knowing that there are volcanoes literally active constantly in Hawaii at that period of time. Right. Um, but nothing was changed. But now we're in a situation that's even, of, of course, more dire, right? Um, many, right. you know, hundreds of thousands of people are dying. Um, and I don't know, like, what what does this movie mean? Because we've talked about how this is a very packed movie already. And then you add in right. a potential virus, if that's the case. This is all very... Um, uh, you know, uh, we're assuming things. I really things, like but... this, man. Like, I know we said that. I know we said that we didn't want there to be like this global thing, like in Planet of the Apes, especially mm-hmm. the way, especially the way that Planet of the, the Apes did it. I thought it was actually really cool for its time, where it was like the oh, motion yeah. graphic at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't want that again. And now we're talking about other creators making dinosaurs, and what if? What if one of the strands of DNA they got, let's say, let's say they don't do the DX virus thing from the lost world, which I don't know exactly how that played out. I don't remember that too well. Um, Yeah. But what if it's as simple in storytelling as one of the strands of DNA to make one of these competitive dinosaurs was from an animal that actually died from a virus and like is now spreading this to the population or something. And and that's how we – because we've always been saying like, well, how are we really going to get to like a Jurassic world? Because human technology right now could just wipe out these 15 or 20 dinosaurs that are that are loose. Yeah. Um, very interesting. I would – it would actually be really kind of sweet if it ended with, you know, and life will find a way. And it was basically about like human hope and like human survival and coming out of this okay, you know? Um, 
I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah. That changes that changes what they were going to do in the future big time though. Yeah. Um I don't know. Or like, we'll learn to adapt or something. I don't How does War of the Worlds end? Well, War maybe, of the Worlds is the same thing. Well, but you know, at least aliens. Yeah, the yeah, the virus kills the aliens, uh which, you know, what was it? Just bugs or something or what? I forget. <laughs> One or of those. It's just, it's, like, it's just our it's just our world life, like they can't yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, if maybe this is not a, a human pandemic, it was like, um, a dinosaur one or something. So it, but, but we, they've talked about continuing the franchise. So it's not like they were going to kill off all the dinosaurs here, you know, because that was one of the worries, right. From the book was that right. it would be, you know, the root, an, another extinction, uh, event, but they're not, why would they do another extinction event? <laughs> like they just did one in the last movie. Um, was that really a worry in the book? Like no one cared if the dinosaurs in the book died off. Well, sure. I mean, but that, well, that, was, a, hero, that was one of the was effects, Malcolm. I guess. Your hero was someone who wanted them to die off. Sure. Yeah. But that was at least one of the, the worries of the book, I guess, was, is this going to be something that kills off the dinosaurs? Um, but I don't know, man. Like, I hope it's, I hope it's hopeful. I hope it makes everybody feel good. Hopefully Colin's on to something. I don't know. I don't know what these script changes are. Like, I don't know. I think it. I think this is the direction, though. I think, I think it's involved somehow. I don't know. Maybe Biosyn is like a company that like says they have a, a cure or something like that. I could see that being a thing. You know, where Biosyn yeah. comes in as like the saviors, but like imagine like Doctor Wu's the savior. Or something like that. He's the one who develops the something, whatever. Like, I would like to see, you know, InGen or or something like that have its its day in the sun again, like to like be something to look after or look up to. Um, Maybe. I just, I guess I just never expected this movie to end on a happy note. Like, not for mm -hmm. humans. You know what I'm saying? Like, these movies are all about these movies are all about like wonder and stuff, but we're going down a, we, we were heading down a path where it was not going to wind up good for us. You no, know what I'm saying? No. And so I wonder if, do you think they treat the dinosaurs as like a metaphor for like a virus? And so they have to figure out how to not do that again. Like, do you think the dinosaurs were like eight? Cause let's face it. Metaphors in these movies are not like, they're not subtle. You get what I'm saying? Like they're <laughs> no, very no. like it hits yeah. you over the head. The dinosaurs are going to represent something. I yeah. wonder if the dinosaurs were originally intended to kind of represent our extermination and our, and our basically our virus, a natural thing that is coming to basically take over us. Mm -hmm. And if that's a problem, even if it's not directly a virus in the movie, like let, like let's say there it's a metaphor for sure. nature reclaiming yeah. earth and killing off a lot of humans you know yeah that that's that could really, be that's really insensitive right i mean now. that's yeah that's not anything new like that's what we've been discussing this entire time is the fact that like dinosaurs right. would come and and eventually spread across the globe um and that's what you know <laughs> malcolm malcolm literally hinted at that you know last time around um yeah but that is that is a good comparison of of like a global pandemic spreading around the globe, but instead that global pandemic is dinosaurs. Um, and you know how do you how do you compare dinosaurs to COVID? I think that's a good way to look at it. Not necessarily a literal virus, but dinosaurs as a virus. I guess could be the way. Yeah, that's interesting. And how do you do that and be sensitive about it when like? You want this movie, you Universal wants this to be the first movie that you come out and see after COVID. And yeah. what are you going to tell them? You're going to tell them that the world is screwed and we're all like going to die. <laughs> no, you want to have some kind of hope in there, right? Like, yeah. you know, maybe we can coexist. Maybe we'll overcome this as humans. But then doesn't that defeat the purpose of what Jurassic World's story is? Well, I could definitely see maybe some script changes being a reaction to the reactions of what we've been going through this past several, several months. You oh. know what I mean? So, so the way people have reacted to COVID, maybe they're writing that into the script to say like, well, we, the things that we've seen with this pandemic, like we've seen 
this check mark. We've seen this check mark, and they'll put that into the script. So mm-hmm. we get these little cutscenes of people reacting to things the way that we've just seen in real world. And you can either yeah. agree or disagree, whatever whatever you want. But um, right, yeah, I think that maybe that's. I think you're onto something with the fact that this is just an allegory for what we've just all gone through or are still going through. Which is going to be really weird because, I mean, not geez, it's really topical to bring it back to War of the Worlds, especially Spielberg's iteration of War of the Worlds was very mm-hmm. much a, hey, we just went through 9-11. We just went through, a, you know, at that point, when that movie came out, and especially I would imagine we have a lot of younger listeners. Um, sure. That movie came out, Spielberg's iteration of that movie came out, I want to say within like three or four years of 9-11. Um, and it, man, that long ago? Yeah, dude, I really oh, don't man. think it was much after 2001. Um, but the sense of patriotism and mm-hmm. there's a scene with the with the with the sun that's very like yeah, it's 2005. over the top. Like what? 2005. 2005. Yeah. Not yeah, too far so away. Like, yeah, we're we're still in like you know 2005. We're still very much like it's still a shocker thing at that point. Mm-hmm. But like you have that scene of the son who's like he wants to go to war. Yeah, you know, going over that wanting- hill. Like getting into yeah. battle, yeah, literally for, for joining those, the military. For those listeners who weren't around in two thousand one, which I would imagine at this point we probably have a f- quite a few. Um, it had to be Tom, right? Like the the I, yeah, Tom, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom. Let me talk to you directly. All right, no, it's like before nine eleven happened. You didn't really see people who like it wasn't like a a thing to want to go to war. Mm-hmm. But like nine eleven rolls around, and we have this like big burst of patriotism and wanting to defend our country and it's like the son even says in that movie they came after us they came like and so it's very much like i'm gonna go yeah. and exact revenge basically because they yeah. came for us and so it would be really weird if like another spielberg i mean i'm gonna say quote spielberg right because it's not really his directorial but it would not be uncommon for an amblin movie or would not be unheard of for an amblin movie to um to allegory something that literally just happened. I think even Jaws, I've seen <laughs> I've seen write up on Jaws where it talks about Jaws oh, yeah. as being this giant allegory for Vietnam. You know? Mm-hmm. Um or right now. You know, <laughs> well, or even right now, but like Jaws like specifically, like the thing I read and people can I've I've had people make fun of me for this because I don't I actually see it like and I like it and I like to find things like that in film, but like yeah. Jaws is like, you know, the people they just want to have fun and the man is like keeping them from having fun and Mm -hmm. the man is going to like go to war with this thing that's preventing the people from having fun and like sure you know so (laughs) you you do have the kind of this and i think even the scene where quint describes his experience on the oh shoot i don't know what it is i'm being like really disrespectful by not knowing this but quint (laughs) talks about his experience on a boat that went down or something and uh-huh. he talks about the, sh- the sharks like ate them and like were picking them off while they like were floating in the water yeah. i don't know if you know this but like that event really happened and there wasn't too much information about that situation Ooh. until like when jaws came out that was the first time that like anybody like tackled what either did or could have happened uh-huh. while those people were basically stranded in the ocean so like people were nope. literally in theaters like yeah it's like super chilling right like people were in theaters because i didn't know that was a real thing because i'm like way beyond when that movie came out i wasn't even born when that movie came out right so yeah, yeah. when i watch that to me that whole movie is fiction sure. but yeah same the situation that quint describes is like it is like a 9-11 it is something that that people in our military dealt with and he's telling this story and it's like dude that's a recent event man like and you're accounting this story whether or not it's fiction or real you're accounting this story in a theater where people are listening to it and it's horrifying yeah like it's a real thing so yeah i would say that if this if this touched on the virus that's definitely a possibility just like now like this is blowing my mind like as i (laughs) as i go back through spielberg's well and that's the guy like he I imagine if this is the case, like him and Colin probably sat down uh, or zoomed at one point and said, you know what? Like we should adjust things to kind of adapt to the situation, right? Like we should. And, and, you know, Steven's like, you know, back in Jaws, I did this. And, you know, back in War of the Worlds, I did this. So like, let's do something similar. 
I'm really talking about Spielberg's like sci-fi stuff. Like it's quite obvious he's done things like you know uh, Schindler's List and oh, Saving of Private course. Ryan. So like yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy is definitely not. But that's afraid of that's real on the history. nose. That's on the nose. Of course, like we're talking right. about like under the surface. You know when like you have to. Yeah look at Grant plugging in a or tr tying a seatbelt and then f figuring out what that means. You know, what does that mean? Yeah, stuff like that. You know, Jurassic is, is known for that kind of thing where, you know, it me it's subtle. Like it doesn't really seem anything visually, but when you look under the surface, you're like, Oh wow. That is actually kind of poignant. That does mean a lot. Wait, but what, you know, I guess I never really thought about it, but is, is the seatbelt the first, the first sign of something not being right? Well, I mean, is it just is, is the seatbelt the first like they didn't pay attention to detail? No, I don't. You know, that's an interesting way to look at it. I don't think I've ever I viewed it that way. Really understood it. I guess I never really understood it. Like, oh, this guy's he's he's funny, but when you really pick that when you really pick that apart, this is the first time on this expedition that mm -hmm. something Ingen just didn't quite pay attention <laughs> enough to detail. You know. I've never, I've, I've, I've wondered about the situation as far as like, why couldn't he find the right pieces? Everybody else probably plugged their stuff in fine, right? Like, so why is he dealing with two of the same parts? And I think that, you know, obviously uh, that's in my mind, that's the allegory for the rest of the movie is how do these dinosaurs breed? Well, it doesn't matter. Life finds a way. Let me tie the seatbelt. You know, that's what it means. Oh, snap, dude. But. The, you're looking at it a different way, and I think that's actually pretty interesting too. It's like, it's the first part, like the first like sign that like we should have got off the helicopter. Like this, why am I tying my seatbelt up in the air right now or when it, wherever it is, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know. But um, yeah, these movies are very well known for the fact that there's a lot under the surface, and that's you know a lot of people just dismiss Jurassic World for being flashy and and blah 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 all this like you know corporate it's stuff. It's not, and, man. There's Jurassic a lot World, under the surface. I feel like Jurassic World is actually like not even trying to hide it. It's basically like, True. hey, our world has a problem with our world has a problem with. Uh, corporate sponsorship and and <laughs> being involved in your cell phones and self-involvement and like yeah. jurassic world doesn't try to hide it jurassic world very much is like hey this is what a dinosaur zoo would be like it's gonna have mm -hmm. the verizon wireless logo slapped on yeah that's that's always you such know. a such an interesting you know depiction because you're like well you're you're commentating on corporate sponsorships but it also is one so like what is this like are you commentating on it or is it just a sponsorship? I don't know. Um, but I, you know, people just don't give Jurassic World and, and these movies enough credit. Uh, th they think that Jurassic Park is like beautiful with everything that it's done under the surface. But I think Jurassic whoa, whoa, World whoa, whoa, whoa. has a lot. Because it is. Yes, not... yes, of course. No denying that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that they, they put Jurassic Park on a pedestal for those things and forget that Jurassic World also has those things. Um, so. Yeah. Speaking to you directly, Mike Hill. Um, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> let me actually, I want to go back to that article also because there was another sentence that we should maybe look at real quick. Okay, um, sure. So it's uh, not really big, by the way. Yeah, dude. I know. I'm like super into this topic. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum also did say, uh, as, as far as like his principles in the movie, mm -hmm. as it happens, there are things my character talks about and has always talked about, like the fragility of our species, the global cooperation that's needed to unite us in trust and connectiveness as a family and to do the right thing by ourselves and this glorious planet. As you can imagine, those are uh, now more relevant than ever. So, oh, uh, what a what a beautiful man. Yeah. So, you know, exactly. That's that's a lot of what we've been saying is like, you know, that hope and and power for, you know, the future to be okay and stuff like that. So, right. You know, he he's 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 talked especially in Fallen Kingdom, right? He was he was very negative. Everything was very negative. Um, but I right. could but see him But you don't him... want Ian to be negative constantly. Like No. That's the thing about Ian is that he and I guess Grant to an extent Grant's a little more on the nose with it, but like Ian recognizes Malcolm recognizes the the power he he gets the the effort it took mm -hmm. and he he understands, but he's like he's more like I understand this is wonderful, but yeah, <laughs> his Ooh, thing is always uh. the next step of his thing is always the next step of like I get it, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. I'm inspired by this. 
This is amazing yeah. to me, but this is a real problem. <laughs> you know, uh, so you don't want yeah. him to be completely jaded. Like that's not fun. No, no. So I, yeah, I imagine that, you know, a lot of these characters will be hopeful, but I, I, I have hope that Ian will too. That would be nice to see, you know, him instead of, instead of being that guy, that's just like, no, no, no. in fallen kingdom to be the guy that's like, let's, figure this out let's not just let right you know what we did last time didn't work we need to figure out a way to make this work this time let's not just um, pile on top and complain about the problem let's actually figure out a solution yeah yeah sounds very uh apropos so let's move on to we're still we're still in the <laughs> jurassic world dominion chat this is going to be a long portion of the uh the the video portions on our our youtube, our YouTube. but uh <laughs> so we also do have some set pictures so let's take a look at some quick um set pictures here so first sure. off we have uh the trio the big three you got sam neil laura dern and jeff goldblum all in their voting attire register to vote now if you guys yep. haven't registered to vote, of course. Um, but like voting aside, I, I was I was like I, I sat there and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that this is our first look at the at the big three. It's you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that this was this was our first big our, our first look at them, like our first look at the new big three. But I. I'm shocked that this is it. I was expecting, you know, something more in tune with, um, you know, a, a character shot or something like that, a, a set photo with the three of them hugging or something like that. But here we are. We yeah. have this uh, the voting picture, but it's it's nice to see them. It's really you know nice to see them together. Do you know why they're doing this to me? Why? We, we can't. <laughs> so at one point we saw, at one point we saw Sam Neill with a beard, uh, and yeah. now you can't tell if he's got the beard. <laughs> I know. Oh. This is actually, I'm I'm quite bothered by this. Yeah, does he have the beard in the movie? I, I need he, him to yeah, have I think the beard does. in the movie, man. I, I think he does because they were filming. You know, even if he doesn't have a beard right here, they were filming prior to this or whenever this was. I don't know whenever this was taken, but like those also videos with taken at any time. Yeah, that's true. The, the The videos with him and Jeff, he had a beard, right? So. I think everything's yeah. fine. I think beard wise, I think everything's fine. Um, right, so, as long as that's what we take away from all of this, he's got to have yeah. a beard. I I was I was surprised to see that this was our first big reveal, but it is impactful. It's an impactful moment in our lives and stuff. So it's a good it's a good reveal for us. But um, I definitely still want to see that T Rex foot with the three of them. Like I want to see something Jurassic related with the three of them. But the the yeah. reveals spoiled already so it's already been done but um i would definitely like you know a character photo as well because this is not a character photo um unless they're voting maybe they're maybe they're voting on dinosaur stuff i don't know i don't think but uh you know you never know <laughs> yeah i don't know i think yeah i don't know this actually didn't dawn on me as being the first time we saw them together since shooting but i guess you're right we haven't seen a photo of like the big three yeah um i mean i'm i guess i didn't even think of this as being i guess even that it's so weird like i didn't even think of that like it wasn't even that didn't even like dawn on me i guess because we've already seen the two guys together like so many times i feel like yeah um yeah that, yeah true and, and and like this isn't even the first time in the last like five years we've seen gold bloom and sam neil together they were together on in thor so like mm -hmm. i i get i don't know i just didn't even dawn on me wow like good <laughs> good catch man well like, that's it, that's what i mean like i expected that first reveal to be a, a character shot so we you know a, accompanied with an article from the Hollywood reporter or variety, you know, one of those type of websites, you know, with a nice yeah. written thing about their characters and what they're going to go through, that kind of good stuff. But, um, no. So that's, you know, I'm sure that will come at some point probably, but here we are. This is our, our first look at the three of them in what may be their style and vibe. You know, I Sam Neill looks, you know, he looks the same pretty much. Lord Dern looks the same pretty much. And Jeff looks, he looks slightly different. Uh, you know, the Ian Malcolm style is a little bit different, certainly more different yeah. than Fallen Kingdom because he has no beard now. So Malcolm in Fallen Kingdom had the beard, but uh, not uh, not Dominion Malcolm. 
because they're going to give us the beard on Sam Neill. That's why. Yeah, um, too, too many beards in one place, I guess, is not a good thing. That's I mean, why this. What, do, that's why this stream other, stinks. Are we next to each other on YouTube? <laughs> um, y- you know what? <laughs> I'm almost wondering, like, I don't think I want a photo of just the three characters. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's actually kind of. I think that's actually a little disrespectful to like, uh, Chris Pratt and Claire. Who uh, okay. Like, I get it. These three are the three that we reminisce about mm-hmm. since we were kids being in the, like the same movie together again. But sure, there's been four or five, mo- four movies between that one and this one. Like, and Claire and Owen are more constant characters, I feel like, at this point than these three. Like, I guess it's weird. Oh. Like, when I think about Jurassic, I... Oh my gosh, it's working. I think I feel I think I think about Claire and Owen more than I think <laughs> about these three being together. Wow. I wow. think their marketing is working on me. Well, I mean, honestly, yeah, because the only time you saw them together was the first movie. The no, no other time, you know? And, and they're and they're not always together in the first movie. Like no, no. they separate they separate within the first hour. Mm-hmm. And then and... so it's just like it's not like it's not like Star Wars where <laughs> Luke Han and Leia, know, like where, the, where those three are like together. They're like, they're on an adventure together for two solid hours. These three are together on set for 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. are they, they're, they're in separate. No, they're in the same car together. So you're talking but, like, so basically they're in the same car until the <laughs> triceratops. So they're in the same car for 40 you know, minutes. Or they're in the same scene for 40 minutes. They're, they probably ha- I would I would venture to guess that they have more screen time together in Jurassic Park than Han, Luke, and Leia. Period. In no, any, in any of the movies. No way, dude. They're barely together. Like I think there's this big misconception of them you all hope. being together. Yeah. We don't think have time about for you to tell me about New Hope, but <laughs> they picked her up at the Death Star you know, uh, uh, jail. Right. And then they yeah. flew to the base and that was it. Then they were never together anymore. They had, just they had really their little really moment on really the death really star. Right. They had their just little really moment on the death star. <laughs> and then where they're not together in, um, empire. Right. For a little bit. There's like one little scene in the base, right. When, when Luke's like healing up and stuff like that, but they separate after that. And yeah. then in uh, the last movie, they're they're sort of together on the way to Endor, right? I guess, I think. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. And I guess they're together on the, the skip I just want to in the beginning the of the movie. Of Michael Scott. Why are you the way that you are, Brad? <laughs> but that's the why? thing is like when these new movies, this new Star Wars started coming out, everybody's like, "Where? why are they not together? That's what Star Wars is. And it's like, it's not really. I mean, yeah, they had a bunch of scenes together, but like, I don't care. It's, not, yeah. it's not what Star Wars really is. I wanted to see them all together, of course. And I think that is probably a mistake of the new movies just to not have had them all together mm-hmm. at once. But, um, but I think maybe Colin would learn from that and be like, you know what? I think, I think everybody in Star Wars was a little mad. So let's put all these guys together. And at least we know that you right. said before they're in a room, at least for a portion of this movie. So, okay, so, so let me let me backtrack then, right? Like I, I do think that the marketing is working on me a little bit where I yeah, don't necessarily yeah, yeah. solely associate these people as Jurassic. But at the same time, like I want to see a cast photo of the three with Owen and Claire. Okay. Like I want I want the three to become the five. If if that hmm. Does yeah. that I think I think they maybe like that, that clarifies my stance. Like I don't yeah. want it to be the three and Owen and Claire. I want it to be the five. And I think I, Yeah, I imagine the six, honestly. I think Mace, Macy Macy has six? to be in there. I think she has to be in there at this point because Macy's the future, you know. I think she's probably gotta be the future of this franchise in a way. I don't know. I don't think so, man. No, you don't think don't... so? Well, that's a different, completely different topic. <laughs> <laughs> should we that's I the mean, topic today Maisie the future of the franchise or no this is um, also the big brother podcast <laughs> but, like, but do you, I don't know like I, I hope I'm being clear like it's not that I want to no I get you like I want yeah. it to be like 
I, I just want it, I want the three to become the five, and I want people mm-hmm. to think of these five characters as synonymous with Jurassic, and not necessarily like two franchises that are like oil and water. If that yeah. makes sense, you know. Well, it's kind of crazy that Ian Malcolm is is the king of this universe. You know, he's know been he's in it, so many of them. He's been in most of them. You know, like the most out mm-hmm. of anybody. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, I mean, I like by two minutes though. Yeah, of course. You know, that that <laughs> Fallen Kingdom runtime is is very minimal. Fallen but... <laughs> Kingdom is what you're is what you're using to edge out Sam Neill. But it's you know, it counts. You know, there wasn't a two there was a two minute moment for Ellie in, in Jurassic Park three, I guess you could say. Like her her Jurassic Park three days were very minimal. Like what did she film for one day? Like I don't uh, what know. What a what a waste. Laura yeah. Dern deserves so much better. For sure. I mean, she was the hero, I guess, of the of the movie, right? So, um, her and Mark. <laughs> I guess. Mark. It, nobody wants to hear that Mark was the hero of of, of a Jurassic movie. <laughs> I got no. I got no beef with Mark. I don't want. I don't want her to be broken up from Mark in this. No, movie. me, me like, neither. That cannot happen. Do not make that happen. No. If you did, that's a very sensitive situation right now. So please change the script. <laughs> I mean. Um, I got nothing. I got no beef with Charlie either. If Charlie. Yeah, for if, sure. If she's like hanging out at home and like, you know, Charlie's home from college or something, I got no. And whatever, whoever the baby I, is. I don't know the baby's name. Was there a name? Well, I don't think so. Yeah. In Dress Park 3? Yeah. It's Charlie. No, there was another one. There was Charlie and the baby. Oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> What's the baby's oh. name? Who's the baby oh. now? Is oh, it man. is it Claire? I don't know. Oh, it's Owen. That's the big reveal. That's the big reveal. You never know. You never know. Could be. You I don't know. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. But Oh my um... god. What if he's like what if Owen's like Mom and then like the camera whip pans over and it's and it's Ellie? Oh yeah. no. <laughs> no. I don't know. That, that's not how last names work, joking. but <laughs> that made me laugh too hard <clears throat> in the middle it, of taking in the middle of taking a almost, drink of water oh man <laughs> we almost we almost killed brad this almost became literally my podcast officially whew, spitting water on my floor that's great so cool oh all right let's move on to the next picture we got the <laughs> it's a set picture here from um a snowy mountaintop yeah, so this they're back on this snowy mountaintop. This um this image was um I believe from the Hollywood Reporter. They put together an article, you know, mm-hmm. about COVID again. This seems to happen every month or so. It's like, let's put out an article that shows that you know these productions, whether it's Jurassic or other productions, are doing the right thing. Um, and this was another one of those articles. And they always reveal like a nice little tidbit. You know, I think you guys talk. Did you guys talk about the copy? And and stuff last time around. Yeah, yeah, we talked um, about the comp. Um, but I feel like you and I might have gone over this in a spoiler section, maybe at one point. So I guess now we can officially talk about it. Sure. But we knew that this snowy thing was part of. We knew this <clears throat> mountain thing was part of uh, the movie. Like you and I, at least, based on looking at like leaked photos or something. But, um. And we've seen Maisie, yeah. I want to say, like in a, in a snow situation. Yeah, and that those have been like officially released too. Like Colin, I, yeah. I believe, is the one who released those. Um, but the other ones were definitely like, <clears throat> I don't know if they were like, feel like aerial shots. shots. That, yeah, something yeah. like of this set specifically mm-hmm. um, with this like, you know, there's like a break right here in the ice. Uh, you've got like a mountaintop back there. Yeah. Um, and this is actually something that you can like pretty much see from the road outside of Pinewood. So this is at Pinewood Studios. Um, okay. So pretty cool, pretty cool set. Um, any any indication on why this clapper thing is so huge? <laughs> Have any uh, uh, any kind of insight onto that? Me, no, I've seen it before. Like this is not the first movie I've seen a giant clapper and a big slate like this. Yeah. Um, is it yeah, maybe I don't know. is it maybe like a a far out shot or something like that that they need a bigger thing to catch uh, like the eye of the the camera 
Um, oh, maybe. Um, like I said, this is this would not be the first time I've seen a giant, a giant yeah. one. Like, and and not not like because of work or anything, but just like I've seen other behind the scenes where they have, especially like the the clapper that's by itself that doesn't have the slate, you know, attached to it at the bottom. Like I've I've seen this somewhere else. I don't know where. Sure. Um, but yeah, not yeah, too much to looks, say about this. Looks, it's real man it looks it looks good oh yeah i mean it looks really good um it honestly reminds me of like those wonderful backdrops that are a part of like islands of adventure with like uh there's there's a nice backdrop behind the kong skull island and it's yeah. it's it's not snowy and stuff like that but it kind of gives off that like faded like in the distance view yeah. of like a mountaintop and that's kind of what you got here um and you know not we're not going to go into detail really about what else is here because there are other elements that I have seen um, <clears throat> a part of this environment right here. You know, maybe you literally right oh, to the oh, right oh, of that oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We won't yeah there's there. literally yeah. something right to the right of this guy that, that, that you know, could play into yeah. it. Um, but um, yeah, I, th I think it's interesting and it's, it's a nice confirmation to, you know, to see that the snow is continuing and um, I'm just interested to see how much, you know, they, they fact like the snow factors into this movie. I think uh, I'm excited to see snow. Um, when, when was this shot? Six, seven. So is that that's probably a UK thingy, right? So they're it's pro is it maybe seven, six? Like it's honestly like it's a July 6th or do you think it's actually. Wait, is that a date? June. Is that a date? Yeah, it's a date. J six, seven, 20. So is that like was this taken back in June or is this a July thing? Because I don't know what this is. This was shot in the UK, so I don't know if they're using those UK dates. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, weird, that, weird that they wait. Weren't they on hiatus for both June and July? Oh no! You no, actually, yeah. This might be like the, one of those first day things. I think it was the beginning of July was when they came back. So this has got to be July sixth, is what this is, right? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, maybe you know the using, schedule better than i do man so yeah like, i know. think it was i'd honestly think like right around july this might be honestly the first shot of of coming back or something like that maybe the article right. said so i don't remember but um but uh yeah very cool i i love the way it looks everything looks pretty cool um uh yeah. brad so if you go to the next image of the guy with the clapper mm -hmm. it says 15 7 so july 15th there 20. you go there you go yeah um, cool. So yeah, this is definitely like beginning of July, mid July, uh, photography, um, you know, showing, showing these, this crew with their precautions and, and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. And going back to that last picture, you do see the three guys there. They all have their masks on. Um, yep. and then the, the next shot, the guy literally has the face visor and the mask as well. So, um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if he's expecting some spit takes here or something, but, uh, you know, like I just did off to the side of the camera, expecting like right. something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah. So uh, do you, do you get anything? Cause like the, the first image, it's just like a snowy mountain peak, but like, do you get anything from what's happening here? No, I think, well, so for me, this second image of the guy with the visor, like I like yeah. this color palette more and like this this feels more like what I want to see in a Jurassic movie, warm colors and like kind of like adventure style boxes and stuff. But it's, it's just enough of a departure from what we've seen already to like feel comfortable and like feel like I'm kind of like, you know, home, like in an, in an adventure movie, mm -hmm. the one in the snow, I'm, I'm good if this is like the first 15 minutes of the movie and then we <laughs> leave the snow. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't know it's just going to feel weird if a bunch of dinosaurs are running around this Arctic tundra. I don't know. I don't know why don't that know. would feel weird to me. Like, you know, well, because we haven't gotten it, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, watching the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. And then you have that like one episode where Harrison Ford is actually in the show and he's like 40 something with a beard and talking about guys with beards, you know, and he plays a saxophone. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but like, it's like the one episode, <laughs> it's like the one episode where Harrison Ford was a part of it. And it's like showing like him, like playing his saxophone. And then he remembers back to his saxophone playing days in the past. And 
you know, it's it's Indiana Jones in the snow. And you're like, oh, my God, I've never seen that before. That's amazing. Uh, so I feel yeah. like that's what this this will be like. It's something that we're very in, very much not familiar with. Um, we get little little hints of things that could be in the snow in, in Cam Cretaceous and uh, other stuff. So, you know, um, I don't know if that plays into the at all, but um, – but you know, you you mentioned the palette and and the way the the color looks and everything. Yeah, this is going to be such an interesting movie as far as the way it looks because, you know, we saw those shots of Maisie in the snow and it was so mm-hmm. so drab and so like just depressing looking. And then you have these vivid like, you know, ruin esque type shots and and you know the you know we've seen a lot of shooting around malta and that's going to be beautiful like it's going to be very beautiful um and then you have you know there's greenery shots and there's other there's other sequences so this is going to be a very siri stop it um this is going to be a very drastic like difference of of scene to scene i'm very interested to see what this movie looks like because the sampling that we have so far is kind of hard to read like what kind of movie this is going to be you know what i'm you know what i'm excited for and i don't know why i never really thought of this but when colin was like you know oh we're moving away from the jungle i was like mm-hmm. bummed but some of my favorite movies and i mean we're talking about star wars right like star wars is a good example george lucas was very he was very adamant i want to visit three different places every film mm-hmm. you know, yeah. know and, and i think i think the james bond series does it really well yeah. where you're in multiple environments. It's globe trotting, Uncharted, which is like my favorite video game franchise of all time. Yeah, you're yeah. easily in three different locations throughout the, those games. Like oh, if yeah. Jurassic becomes that, I have like no problem with that. That's awesome to me. Um, so this, this would be the first one that deviates from this like rigid color palette of like, yeah, Green. green you know what i'm saying yeah that's it it's just the greenery yeah. it's like you were saying about the jurassic world colors and uh you know just all that vibe like this vibe what is this vibe you know it's woods and then it's yeah then it's snow then it's you know a, a, a wonderful looking like seaside town you know ancient so i have no idea what this movie is going to look like but you're right i think you're right about like the james bond style like this is that's a good comparison, I think, because it feels like you a James do have Bond. That. Like that's what I'm getting from both these images. I can see yeah. these in a Bond film, and yeah. I think that's a nice carryover from Fallen Kingdom because you have that that moment in in the Lockwood, you know, estate where like he's he literally is Indiana Jones, Jason Bourne, like punching Owens, punching people, yeah. doing all that stuff, and it kind of would translate well into whatever this ends up being if it is a globe trotting adventure. Um, and you know, there was always those rumors that. Uh, Chris Pratt would one day be Indiana Jones. So bringing it back to Indiana Jones um, there, you know, oh, yeah. they, they had, they mocked it up and he looked really good in the hat and the, in the jacket or whatever, the shirt. So, you know, this could be his, his vehicle for that instead of going to Indiana Jones. So um, that's man. awesome. That's something new. You get yeah. like Owen Grady as derivative as he is, as I said a million times, as derivative <laughs> as, he is, as he is of a combo of Alan Grant and Robert Muldoon, yeah. he, he is a new character in the franchise. Like we've never had that character mm-hmm. in these movies, that adventurer. Um, sure. You, you know, that adventurer punch him, right. Run and gun kind of guy. We, we've, we see elements of that character in a lot of the other characters, but never, we've never had that as like Jurassic doesn't really have action characters until you get to Owen Grady, even, yeah, even Nick Van yeah. Owen, which was kind of supposed to go into that. Nick Van Owen doesn't even come close to what Owen Grady is. So kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool. No, not at all. You know, honestly, it, it, does this have vibes of like the the Mummy reboot that they did, you know, a few few years I mean, back? Like, like the, with that, talk, that like... Let's not talk about it. Let's, <laughs> Look, man, why you got to bring the Mummy reboot into I, it? Well, because I'm moving on to, to uh, the, next, the next topic here, which is Jake Johnson. So um, he was in the Mummy reboot. That's why I kind of went that way. Uh, and... Oh. You know, we we had um, conversations a while back about, you know, him potentially not being involved in Dominion. Uh, You know, he was, you know, you mentioned Omar C and and, uh, you know, what's his deal? And then recently we heard about Jake Johnson maybe not coming back due to scheduling issues um, with his TV show Stumptown. 
um, season two was scheduled to to go into production and stuff like that. And unfortunately for Jake, I guess it, it kind of looks like Stumptown got canceled. So, um, you know, you're seeing that a lot right now with shows. It's like it's not canceled because it was bad or because people didn't enjoy it. Stuff's getting canceled because they literally can't do it or it's costing them too much money to film this style of show. Or, you know, you look at all these produ- uh, production issues that, you know, Jurassic has already run into many issues um, and all the precautions that are they're putting into place. It's not really that affordable for a small TV show to do. So look they're getting the canceled left that, and right. Look at the shows that Disney Plus is moving forward with this year. Mm-hmm. Um, they just dropped a Mandalorian trailer. And we know that Mandalorian is basically virtual production with Unreal Engine. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. that's literally shot on a soundstage. A lot of it can probably be shot close set. Um, Unbelievable, and that's by the way. Forward. Like, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I cannot wait. Um, that could be the future have, of Jurassic, dude. dude like that's, that's, the, that's how you do a Jurassic TV live action show. Yeah, a whole, 100%. You, know? you don't need yeah. anything. You just need a circle and some screens. You know, like amazing. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. Um, And then you have they're moving forward with come, you know, it says coming soon. There's no date, but they're moving forward with um, WandaVision, which is like an old school three camera sitcom. Yeah. Like style. I, th- I think so, that is coming in December, though. Um, they I think they did put a date on that somewhere. Oh, did they? I mean, still yeah. like coming in December, like that means that they, that means that during COVID they were basically pushing forward, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so like, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like that those are the kind of TV shows that are in last. I was, I was talking with a friend and it's like the, he seems to think that a big, we're going to see a big uptick in animation, animated, animated films over the next couple of years, because all those people are, Mm-hmm. easier to work from home sure, you know sure. your yeah. your biggest problem is getting the recording done but i can't really see how that's all that difficult like you put the you guy the you equipment. put the actor in a booth and you clean yeah. it down a lot when they're done yeah oh yeah so, you can do that yeah but like recording you know, is not that difficult a lot of vo stuff happens at the person's house in a closet or in a hotel room like wherever they are I, i've seen that happen a lot so um you know, uh, I, I listened to uh, I listened to Office Ladies, and when this went down, this pandemic, uh, is it Earwolf that they work with? Earwolf came out and installed recording booths in their homes. They they gave them recording equipment. Yeah, yeah. You know, and for anybody that doesn't know, know like the way Earwolf works is like people go in and they record at the studio like eight episode chunks. Like they do like eight episodes a day, and then they're done. Like they sure. just work a day for like every three or four months, right? Yeah, and uh, so what? And what ended up happening was that Earwolf like gave them equipment, and that put Earwolf out. Earwolf was because now you know, um, I I don't I'm I'm sorry I'm like forgetting Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey like yeah they might have they might rent that equipment one day every two months, but now they have that equipment at their home all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously podcast recording is nowhere near as intricate as VO recording. What do you but... mean, man? This is very difficult for me. Come on. <laughs> You, you, you should see the very scientific <laughs> setup I have with my camera on a uh, headphones box. Yeah. Um, and, you can spit and my, all my over the equipment here. And on a chair. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying, like, I don't really see why VO, especially as the world kind of starts to figure out how to open back up. I think VO is actually very realistic to get back to, you know? Sure. Yeah. May, I, that's why I think Camp Cretaceous could be a big thing for the future of the franchise you know it's like if we can't do other things let's do this a lot um yeah yeah so that that's just my point is uh showing you know jake johnson here is you know his show was canceled unfortunately for him uh you know that's that's a bummer uh but it does i guess make him available right like it potentially could make him available for dominion and to reprise whatever that small portion like because it it didn't really seem like it was going to be anything big what, whatever he no, had mentioned previously. Yeah. yeah, he had mentioned something like, he's like, yeah, we got this real cool nugget of an idea, uh, you know, for a way to come back into the fold. And he was joking about, like, being some, like, crazy guy or something. I forget what it was. But, um, yeah, this this at least opens him up to being able to 
potentially reprise it. No confirmations. I'm not confirming anything. No real news I'd like here. For but back. Like I've said a million yeah. times, he's one of my favorite characters like in the entire series. And I think it's yeah. simply because he's written to be the fan of the franchise. Um, and I think, I think he portrayed, he portrayed all my feelings of Jurassic world. I thought very well in that movie. And so sure. I, yeah. I've said a million times, I would have, I would take him over Franklin any day. That's not any insult <laughs> to the actor of Franklin. I just, it didn't make any sense for that swap to happen to me. I was like, this yeah. seems, this act seems more jarring than it just seems more jarring to me. Yeah. Um, than anything uh so i'd like to see him back and if if it's a cameo now and that opens the door up later like to me i feel like this could be a jake johnson franchise as much as it could be a chris pratt franchise like you know wow. I'd, I'd love for him wow. to return in future movies as the main character even like i'm i'm down with that dude that would be awesome like i've never really considered that but you know i think jake johnson is amazing like he is so darn funny in new girl yeah like new girl i think is one of my favorite comedies and it is- i think my the best line he delivers i think in the entire thing he's like i'm rich he's like fill my gas tank all the way rich and i'm like <laughs> oh man i know that feeling all too well yeah it's like let me get ten dollars like or five maybe like yeah so yeah. he he is so funny in that show and you know we we joked about the mummy a little bit but i think like you know, he did a serviceable actually, job in that. And in the mummy. He, he got the he mummy. got in really good, really good shape in that movie, like yeah. impressive shape. So like he went from playing Nick Miller, who's this like schlub of a guy, like you know, just drinking beers all the time, to a military kind of guy that's like ripped. So yeah, it's he's capable of doing it. Sure, he wasn't really that guy. He was like mid progression in Jurassic World, just like normal dude. Um, but uh, yeah, you could see maybe he was working out in the meantime. So I, let's give him a, a vehicle for the franchise. I'd like that. Yeah, I'm I'd totally like <laughs> I would love it. I would love it if he was a leading <laughs> character in those movies like that. Yeah, that'd be phenomenal. I'd be That'd totally be down with it. Yeah, let's you know, the, the new era of Jurassic films. Let's make it happen. Exactly. So I think that wraps up our Jurassic World Dominion discussion, which was outrageously long. Uh, So... (laughs) 